Neil deGrasse Tyson exposes moon landing Apollo 11 flaw. He says, has anyone considered this? And I'd like to, you, for you to tell me what you think. Tyson exposes the flaw in theories claiming Apollo 11 moon landing was faked, and he's asking his viewers to think deeply before they make bold claims like this. More than 50 years ago, July 20th, 1969, NASA completed the seemingly impossible mission to land the first two men on the moon, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. And as we all know, Armstrong made history by jumping off the Lander Eagle, delivering his legendary speech, One Small Step, to the millions watching back on Earth, and the late astronaut became overnight sensation after planting the U.S. flag onto the lunar surface and bringing an end to the space race that is beating the Soviet Union, putting a man on the moon. And on returning back to Earth, Armstrong was questioned by the public for shying away from the limelight and notoriously avoiding interviews. So some led uh, to the questioning of whether the entire mission was actually faked. But Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson will not stand for these wild theories because he's expressing passionately why during a recent video with Penguin Books, he said in November, have you really thought about what it would take to fake the moon landings? He says, the rocket did launch. We all saw the rocket launch. So the hardware is there, like office building blueprints for the design of the Saturn V rocket. Hundreds of thousands of engineers who worked thousands of hours behind this and, and the records are the designs. And Tyson went on to explain exactly why the ideas are ludicrous. He said, if you wanted to fake the moon landing, you would have to take to fake all these documents. It just seems to me that it would be way easier just to go there. Has anyone considered that? Just go to the moon. That is so much easier than faking all of this. So yes, we did go to the moon, is what he says. Now in the past, Dr. Tyson also cleared up Armstrong's post-flight actions during his Star Talk podcast, confirming this was natural behavior for Armstrong, and that he wasn't... Uh, uh, a person that was uh, wanted to be in the limelight. He told listeners in July, Neil Armstrong was not gregarious. He was a very quiet man and did not speak publicly. He was not the life of the party, but sometimes the people who are not the life of the party are sitting doing nothing. And he's sitting there in his head, figuring stuff out. It's the active mind of a restless brain of the engineer. And that is what was captured. Fellow NASA astronaut Mike Massimino was a guest on the show and gave his own verdict. He said, when I first met Neil, he got up in front of us and it was like, we're meeting our hero. He's the man, right? But he gets up there and it seems that he was almost painfully shy, like it was hard for him to talk. He didn't mention the mood at all. He talked about test flying and how important that is and how you have to be diligent about it and how much he loved it. And after he was done, we got to the questions and answers. Then we asked him what it was like on the moon but up to that point, he was delivering his message and almost painfully shy. But he loved so much that uh, what he did, and that's what he focused on. All right, now tell me what you think. Okay, hardware goes up and you do have blueprints. So it does not mean that things are a success on the moon. And uh, please give me your comments. I don't know. You tell me. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help 
economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapotal, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.